In this video, we will discuss about turbine bearing devices and turbine bearings. We already discussed about turbine casings, turbine rotors, turbine blades, stationary blades, nozzles, twisted blades and shrouds in our previous video. Turbine bearing device When a turbine is left cold and at a standstill, the weight of the rotor will tend to bend the rotor slightly. If left standstill, while the turbine is still hot, the lower half of the rotor will cool off faster than the upper half and the rotor will bend upward. In both cases, the turbine would be difficult to start up. To overcome the problem, the manufacturer supplies the larger turbine with a turning or bearing gear consisting of an electric motor which though several sets of reducing gear turns the turbine shaft at low speed. The first turning gear turn the shaft at approximately 20 revolution per millimeter, later increase to 40 and up to 60 revolution per millimeter. As proper lubrication is difficult to obtain at low speed, the same goes for the hydrogen seals of generator. Some turning gears electric or hydraulic turn the shaft at set times over a period of 24 hours. Before a cold turbine is started up, it should be on the bearing gear for approximately 3 hours. When a turbine is shut down, it should be bearing for the next 24 hours. If a hydrogen cooled generator is involved, the turbine should be kept on bearing gear to prevent excessive loss of hydrogen. All bearing gears are interlocked with a lubricating while pressure switch and an engagement limit switch operated by the engagement handle. Turbine bearings One of the turbine basic part is bearing. They are two types of bearing used based on the type of load act on them. Radial bearing, thrust bearing. Radial bearing, for a small turbines mostly equipped with anti-friction type bearings. Widely used anti-friction bearings are the self aligning spherical ball or roller bearing with flooded type lubrication is used. In case of medium turbines used plain journal bearing. They may be ring lubricated sleeve bearing with bronze or babbit lining. Both flooded and force types are employed. For large turbine, the radial bearing will be a tilting pad type. The number of pad per bearing will be selected based on the weight of the rotor. For these types of bearing, forced lubrication is used. Thrust bearing. The main two purposes of the thrust bearings are to keep the rotor in an exact position in the casing, to absorb axial thrust on the rotor due to a steam flow. The thrust bearing is located on the free end of the rotor or we can say at the steam inlet of the turbine. The axial thrust force is very small for impulse turbines. This is due to the presence of pressure equalizing holes in the rotor disc to balance the thrust force generated across the disc. A small thrust bearing such as a ball bearing for a small turbine and radial babbit facing on journal bearing are commonly used in a small and medium sized turbines. Tilling pad type thrust bearing are used in the large steam turbines. In the case of reaction turbine, the pressure drops across the moving blades creates a heavy axial thrust force in the direction of a steam flow through the turbine. Due to greater thrust force, the heavy duty thrust bearing such as tilting pad type thrust bearing are used. The axial thrust in reaction turbines can be nearly reduced by using of balance or dummy pistons. As we see in the purpose, the thrust bearing not only taking the thrust load but also to maintain the position of the rotor. The axial position of the rotor is very important and an axial position indicator is often applied to the thrust bearing. As a normal practice, the axial position of rotor exits 0.3 mm alarm and shut down at 0.6 mm. These values change with respect to manufacturer or turbine model.